On this video, I'm going to show you how to configure your SQL Server 2012 Express so you can remote login on that server. If you remember from the first video, I installed my SQL Server on a Windows 7 machine that's right here on my network. So I'm just going to remote desktop to that machine. So this is my quote quote server, not really a server, it's just a Windows 7 that I'm going to use as my database server. If you're going to work on the, on the local machine, in other words, if your Visual Studio or whatever it is, is installed on this machine here, then this video is not for you. This video is for you if you're going to have your database in one machine and you're going to be working with Visual Studio on a separate machine or if you're going to allow a website from a separate machine to access the data on this database. So I'm going to open the SQL Server Management Studio In connect right click properties and connection in this checkbox must be checked click OK and now let's take a look on the SQL Server Configuration Manager and you need to enable the TCP IP protocol so SQL Server Network Configuration the protocols my TCP is enabled if it's not then properties enable yes on IP address, go all the way down, dynamic ports, I want to delete this and on the TCP port I want to add 1433, apply. On the SQL Server services, the browser needs to be running, so let's enable and start the browser so start mode I'm gonna put on automatic and then apply on log on start okay now I'm going to restart the SQL Server. So right click and restart. And now your SQL Server is configured, but now we need to configure the firewall. Because without the firewall being configured, the connection is not going to go in the machine. And now let's configure the firewall. And we need to allow the port to go in the machine. So on advanced settings, on the inbound rules, I'm going to create a new rule. And I want to allow a port. Click next. I'm going to allow the TCP port. And the port is 1433. Next. Allow connection. Next. 
and I'm going to name TCP port 1433 and finish. I'm going to create a second rule, so new rule again. A port. This time I'm going to click on UDP and the port is the same 1433. Allow connection. All three clicked and the name is going to be SQL UDP port 33, 1433. And our third rule is going to be for a program. Next, find the program. It's going to be my SQL browser. On my installation, it happens to be on this location. And I want to allow the SQL browser. Allow connection. Finish. And my fourth is and last rule is also to allow a program. And now I don't want the browser anymore. I want the actual SQL Server. This file right here. So SQL Server. And mine happens to be on this location. Open. Next, next, next. Finish. And now we have four new ports. Two to allow the ports 1433 on, e on TCP and UDP. And one to allow the SQL Server and want to allow the SQL Browser. So remember this is my desktop, my remote desktop connect and I'm going to open on my client machine which is Windows 10. I'm going to open my SQL Server Management Studio. I'm using the 2014 here. Connect and now I'm connected. Now, just so there's no confusion, this here is my remote machine, and this here is from my local machine. So now I can access the database on my remote machine from my local machine and that's all so if you are here with me and if you got this done that means that now you can start writing programs or writing web pages on your client machine and then those web pages whenever you're testing you will be able to access the database on this machine here I do that because I have another machine and if I run my database on my local machine it's going to use more resources so I always like to use a second machine to do my database and that's all it's very really easy and you can do it